You asked for a video explaining how to calculate net versus gross square footage for the NCIDQ exam. Fear not, for I have answered. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to measure and calculate gross, net, usable, and rentable square footage. So let's get into it. What's up designers, my name is Kelsey. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the industry and profession. A quick plug before we get into today's video, if you're currently studying for the NCIDQ exam, then be sure to get your hands on my NCIDQ cheat sheets. These are printable PDFs covering some commonly tested topics you'll see on the practicum exam, as well as some blank versions for you to use as as mini quizzes. I've left a link to that as well as a link to sign up for my monthly email newsletter, timestamps, mentioned videos, and additional study resources down in the description box. So without further ado, let's get into the topic. Before we talk about the difference between the terms net and gross, we need to first talk about where all of these standards of measurement are coming from, and that is BOMA. BOMA stands for Building Owners and Managers Association. It's an organization that sets industry standards for measuring commercial spaces, which helps landlords, tenants, and designers define rentable square footage. These standards are important because it creates parameters surrounding how landlords can charge tenants rent and how designers calculate square footage. We won't dive any deeper into BOMA itself, but it's really important for you to know about it and know exactly what their role plays because 99% likely that you will see BOMA or something regarding BOMA on the NCIDQ exam. Now let's talk about the difference between gross and net square footage. I'll give you guys a little analogy for this. Just like in finances, gross represents the total amount, whereas net represents a smaller specific portion of the gross total. If I earned $100 income, $100 would be my gross profit but I have expenses to pay, maybe employees, and I live in New York City, which means my income tax is like 99%. So when I subtract out all of those expenses and variables, my actual take-home pay may only be $30, which is usable income that I can use to spend on things like overpriced martinis at Dante. So if we think about square footage in a similar way, the gross square footage should include everything. The exterior and interior walls, columns, common areas, stairwells, elevators, mechanical spaces, everything. But net square footage only represents a portion of the gross square footage. More specifically, the usable portion, which means it does not include exterior walls, mechanical rooms, vertical penetrations like stairwells, and shared building spaces. Let's look at an office floor plan to see exactly where these measurements would be taken from. Here, we see a single tenant commercial office building floor. Since the gross square footage includes exterior walls, we're going to measure from the exterior face of the exterior walls. We're also including everything we just mentioned, all interior walls, stairwells, mechanical rooms, everything on this floor. Let's now measure this tenant's net square footage. Net square footage does not include exterior walls, so we're going to measure from the interior face of exterior walls. A very, very important thing to note about this is that the dominant material of the exterior wall will determine exactly where you're measuring from. If the windows account for less than 50% of the surface area of the exterior wall, the net measurement should be taken from the inside of the wall face. But if the wall is made up of 50% or more glass, then the net measurement would be taken from the inside face of the glass. This is an extremely important variable because although it may seem like such a minute difference, for a large building, that could mean the difference between hundreds of square feet in difference, which means thousands of dollars in lost rent profit for the building owner, which I assure you they will not be happy about that. This plan shows mostly a hard exterior wall with smaller windows. So for this case, we would measure from the inside face of the wall. Although there's only one tenant on this floor, this plan shows a common corridor or elevator lobby. Because this is technically a shared building space and not a part of the tenant's actual usable space, we would exclude this portion in our net calculation and take our measurement from the inside face of the tenant's demising wall. The demising wall between the tenant and the public corridor is technically considered to be a part of the common building. With that, we're excluding these restrooms since they're technically a shared building space rather than inside the tenant space, as well as the stairwells, elevators, and mechanical room. 
There's also a small internal staircase, which probably means that this particular tenant occupies two floors and the staircase provides easier access to travel between both. But according to our definition, all stairwells and vertical penetrations are not included in net square footage. So we would subtract this portion from our calculation. Columns are also not usable space, so all column square footage would be subtracted as well. Something that actually is included in the tenant's net square footage is any interior non-structural walls because technically those walls could be demolished if the tenant wanted to have one big open space rather than several offices. So we are not subtracting these interior walls. One final thing I want to mention is that in the case that you have multiple tenants on a single floor, the demising wall between two tenants is considered a shared part of each of their usable spaces. So in this case, you would measure a tenant's net usable space from the center line of these demising walls. Hey guys, editing Kelsey here. I just wanted to make a quick note of something I forgot to mention. If you look on this plan, you can see that the doors to this are slightly pushed back. That's to allow the door to swing out without you know, accidentally hitting someone in the corridor. In a case like this, and also for any wall bump outs, let's say there's a column bumping out of the exterior wall or any other little nooks like this, you would just draw a straight line across where this bump out or nook is. So in this plan specifically, we wouldn't draw uh, the measurement of our net square footage from the actual wall shape of this demising wall. We would just draw a straight line across and count that little bump in area as part of the net square footage. Now that we understand the difference between gross and net square footage, we need to talk about usable versus rentable square footage. You already heard me use the term usable when we were talking about net square footage. That's because these terms are basically used interchangeably and they represent the portion of the space that can physically be used by the tenant. So if you know how to calculate net square footage, you know how to calculate usable square footage. Rentable square footage is the square footage used by the landlord or building owner to calculate how much the tenant will pay for rent. It is calculated by taking the tenant's net or usable square footage and adding a building load factor. A load factor is a percentage that landlords add on to the usable square footage that accounts for a portion of the shared building spaces. Because if this tenant is only paying for their usable portion, who is paying for all the square footage of the corridors in the building lobby and the bathrooms? All of the tenants in the building need to pay a portion of this square footage and essentially split the cost of the shared spaces. Load factors for commercial spaces are typically between 10 and 30%, but you shouldn't need to calculate this percentage on the exam because typically in real life, the landlord would calculate it and provide this percentage to you. So let's say that this building's load factor is 30%. To calculate this tenant's rentable square footage, we would take the usable or net square footage and multiply that by 1.3, which adds our 30% load factor to get rentable square feet. If you're looking for more NCIDQ test prep videos, then check out my NCIDQ video playlist here. And if you're thinking of taking the NCIDQ exam, don't forget to click the link down below in the description box to be added to my email list and get your hands on those cheat sheets. I'll see you next time for more educational interior design content. Thanks for watching and happy studying.